All right, hello and uh, welcome to the BBS English Service. This is a uh, children's program. In today's edition, I'm joined by 11-year-old uh, Yushi Tsiangzam, who published her first book, Kake, becoming the youngest writer in Bhutan. And Yushi is a class 7 student at uh, Lungtan Sampa Middle Secondary School. Welcome to the program, Ishi. So, uh, Wisha, as far as I know, kake is a Western Bhutanese custom of children, you know, discreetly delivering snowballs filled with delicacies, right? Uh, to a neighbor's house on the first snow day of the year. This is what we know about kake, but we just want to know more about kake. Mm, kake is it's a fun game. It, it's uh, our culture. It's delivering a snowball to to a neighbor or a relative's house you can have fun you can uh, also have a grand feast you'll have fun delivering it you'll have fun running and if you win you'll have fun smearing soot all over the losing family's uh, okay. member so it's like almost it's a cultural game and first thing it's fun so you can't just ignore it then second thing it's a culture so we can revive it and we can uh, preserve it okay that's quite beautiful and uh, kaki seems to be quite a fun game out there you know with your neighbor okay do you mean uh, when we say neighbor it can be any neighbor right yeah any neighbor or a uh, relative's house close by okay so what do we do with that snowball you put ingredients in it each ingredient that you want in the feast or the meal you want if you win if you miss salt you'll have to eat a saltless treat okay. uh, so uh, what you do is you go they shouldn't discover you with the hake with you and uh, of course, they'll be um, suspicious that you're coming, so you must hide it so they can't find it. You can quickly get kake from the hiding place and you can put it behind their stuff. You can run away. You can't just run away without saying anything. You'll have to shout like, uh, there's a kake behind your stuff or I'm going to get a treat from you very soon or something. And when that family members come and chases you, you must run back to your house safely. And if you win, you get a feast. Okay. And if you don't, they smear soot on your face and... Instead of them giving the treat to you, you'll have to give the treat to them. Okay, so uh, basically, there's a kind of chase game. And uh, if you are being caught by the neighbor, so you will not get the feast, right? No, th uh, instead, with the ingredients inside that uh, snowball, you'll have to give the treat to the other. Okay, okay. And uh, looks like whoever is uh, delivering that uh, snowball, he or she should be quite... Uh, Fast uh, and yeah, fast clever. and very diligent. Mm. Okay, so when we say kake, is that uh, snowball? Yes, uh, it's actually like ka. Uh, it's uh, in some other places. It's also known as kauke. Uh, I heard my parents talk about it, and actually, it's like ka means actually snow, mm -hmm. and ka and ke means like delivering it to others' okay, house. Okay. So it's like well. you're delivering snowball to uh, your neighbor or a relative's house. Okay, now that really makes sense. Uh, kauke, so delivering mm. snowball. All right, that sounds to be quite a beautiful traditions. D do you think uh, this kake still exists? Mm, not really because I haven't seen anyone play it and I know even if I still go right now and go they wouldn't be chasing me around so I hope that one day this game would be very famous around. Okay, so maybe because uh, people are not really aware what mm. kake is all about and uh, they're not really aware about the fun incorporated in this uh, tradition. Alright, that's so beautiful of you and uh, by the way you are just 11 years and uh, well 11 years is just uh, just an age whereby children just play outside and uh, well in the urban areas they, they're just children are quite busy with their uh, smartphones and well in the rural areas oh, no, 11 years is quite an age for <laughs> herding cattle but you are just 11 years and I can't believe you just wrote and published a book so after all this endeavor, uh, after all this achievement, how do you feel becoming the youngest writer in Bhutan? It feels great and I wouldn't have possibly done it without my parents, my uh, relatives, uh, Uncle Paso, Timpo Primary School, my teachers. I want to thank mm. because even if I wrote this book, I wouldn't have come here and been this great without them. Okay, okay, that's beautiful and uh, you have a bunch of people to whom you are very thankful and uh, I hope they will be very happy to hear you be thankful to them anyways uh, well by the way when we write a book or whatever you do in life uh, there should be some starting point right okay did you have this intention to oh i will write a book about kake or 
did it happen incidentally? Actually, my parents, they have been the one. They've been constantly telling me to write a book. And um, my parents used to read to me when I was four years old. And then I started reading when I was in class one. My first step to writing was reading. Then my parents were like, it'd be better if you write a book because you can. And then I think my parents informed one of my teachers at my school. And she gave some of paperwork. And she sang, uh, she chose some students and um, told us that we could do it. So first reading. Second, my parents and third, teachers, my school and, and my mother's friends, my father's friends who have helped me get this far. Well, we have uh, that strong group of people, you know, who really inspired you to write this book. And uh, well, if some of the writers are listening to us right now, they must be already feeling this difficulty associated with writing a book and uh, coming up with such a big achievement in just 11 years. Well, when we talk about writing book, I know one thing that obviously come into mind is um, funding. Would you like to tell us something about the funding of the book is it uh, sponsored or self-funding uh, it's self-funded um, my mother and my father they have been uh, sponsoring the money uh, yes and okay it's self-funded okay so it looks like your parents are very supportive and uh, well I'm personally very proud of your parents for being that supportive uh, to you who is very talented they somehow seems to know what is hidden behind you and uh, it seems to just groom you to the best uh, person ever. Anyways, uh, so you have written this book, Kake, which is all about delivering snowballs to a neighbor house with delicacies inside. So when you began writing this book, did you ever thought about your target audience or your target readers? My father and my mother, they have been telling me to write a book. So my goal was to publish my book and preserve our culture. Uh, my parents were telling me if I could write a book about culture, it would be okay. great and it could revive our Process. old culture. Okay. My mother wrote an article at uh, 2015 about Kaki. So when I asked her, she told me it was a culture, it was a game. And then uh, earlier snowfall we had last year, yeah. it, that reminded me of Kaki again. And okay. I asked her, she again reminded me what it was. Then I thought of writing it. And my goal was to write a book about culture and revive it back. So that was uh, a little bit of background about Kaki and uh, I don't know what else happens in Kaki and uh, how actually it is uh, fun and uh, well, a game loved by everybody in the past. And I hope that your book, The Kaki, will inform our readers, especially youth and children, about the tradition. And uh, I hope that they will bring this back, possibly this winter. Let's hope for that. Uh, I'm still in conversation with uh, Ishi Tsiangzam, a class 7 student of Lungtin Zampa Middle Secondary School here in Thimpu, and the youngest writer in Bhutan. She recently published her book titled Kaki. Uh, Kaki is a Western Bhutanese custom of children desperately delivering snowballs filled with delicacies to a neighbor's house on the first snow day of the year. And uh, we're also proud to know that uh, some part of the proceedings of the sale of the book will go to us, Bhutan to organizations, right? We are very happy for that. And uh, well, as I said before, we salute you for that. So anyways, uh, if we ask, you know, children of your age, just 11 years in, you know, a seventh standard in class to write a story or write anything, I'm 100% sure that they will instantly write about love, their likes and dislikes. But you know, you just 11 years and uh, in a seventh standard have done something unimaginable you know uh, this wouldn't have imagined by any of our people who listen to us right now that an 11 year old and a class 7 student will write about the culture which has died out and which needs our support and uh, concentration for its revival what inspired you to write about culture first reading was uh it inspired me to write then everybody knows that our culture is fading away today most of us are into korean now uh, even i watch korean dramas uh, sometimes follow the language the k-pop idols we like them and we talk about them we buy their posters and all and everybody do know that the culture is fading away my parents they told me if i could write about culture it would be great and it could revive uh, you said something so good about culture. So why do you think it is important for our children to know 
about our culture. We children are the nation builders. We are the future and uh, we need to um, teach our generations to preserve our culture. Um, I also dedicated this book to Kelsey because we all know he will be our future king. Uh, our kings are role models for our country. They are the example and our Kelsey would be our next role model for our um, beautiful culture and yeah. great country. And the kings uh, from generation to generation, they were the symbol of unity in our country. This country has become become independent because of our kings and they still preserve our culture and I think we must follow the example, our role models and preserve our culture because we are not a wealthy country but the main thing that we have in our country is our culture. Culture is very important to us. It is one of the main source yeah. that we are a Benton country right now. Yeah. So culture, everybody should follow our great and wonderful culture. Okay, that's really a beautiful thought that you have inside and uh, your thought is enough uh, inspiration to all the listeners and especially the youth and children out there listening to us to look from a different perspective on the culture which is dying and uh, which needs revival. Okay, so basically what you do in this kake is uh, in the name of uh, upholding and preserving our culture you don't have to dedicate uh, really into preserving culture through playing game you somehow preserve it and uh, bring it back your book adds up to thousands of books written by Bhutanese authors right from a child perspective do you think we have enough people who read uh, book written by Bhutanese authors personally I also don't read uh, many books written by them I don't find the books also I don't think there are many people reading Bhutanese but I think if they read it they would also be inspired to write about our own culture so I don't think there are many readers reading okay. Bhutanese books okay why do you think our people are not reading our book is, it, is it something like our book lacks taste mm, I'm not sure because I myself uh, is not that um, professional and this is my first book so okay. I can't okay. actually um, uh, pinpoint the right. um, reason. I don't read these books because I am into many other different because the other books are full of fantasies fairy tales and stuff but I think some of the Bhutanese books are great because I have read um, uh, La Ama the first part and it was great. And that's a really a beautiful thought about our culture and yeah Tseyang, uh, if at the time I would definitely love to keep you, you know, throughout the day talking about these things and because because you have a, a, a beautiful heart and beautiful soul and you have this beautiful thought about the sacred culture and tradition and, uh, well, a lot of beautiful things to say. Well, whenever I talk to the the writers, I definitely ask this question. Uh, your first book, Haki, you know, making you the youngest writer in Bhutan is a big success. Well, I'm sure that children out there are grabbing your book and uh, I'd definitely love to read that as well. Are you by now planning to write your second book anyway? I was planning on writing about fantasies because okay. I love them but now I've been writing that but my parents told me to uh, write about culture so I am writing a novel not exactly a novel but a chapter book but I'm still like thinking how about I write a cultural book again mm. so it'd be yeah. more interesting for the readers so they could also have fun and you know uh, would love to do some of the things that is in the book so I am writing my book the chapter book but it still might be that another um, kids children's book might come out faster than the chapter book okay that, that's quite interesting going by uh, what you have done in your first book Haki I think and I'm optimistic that children are quite excited to hear this good news and we are excited as well and uh, we wish you a lot of success in this endeavor uh, so anyway we have almost come to the end of the conversation and uh, I mean we are so excited to have you in our show today so your last word to our listeners today. I have a lot of things to say, but the one thing I really want to see is in winter when it snows, I'd like to see everyone holding a snowball in their hands and, you know, playing this game, having fun. Exactly some of the members, um, you know, aunties and uncles wouldn't actually play much, but the youth in our country, we are still active and 
I would like to see everyone to play. And I'd like to relay this message uh, for the readers who would like to write and um, publish a book. The first step into writing is reading. If you read, anything is possible. So Okay, so that was the keynote uh, from uh, Hishi Tianzam on tips. Uh, the first uh, step towards writing is reading. And I hope our people out there who are listening to us right now will take this note very diligently and, uh, uh, well, follow the path taken by Yishi Tiang Sam. Anyways, Kaki is not only about a young girl's passion to write, but also a lot about a dying culture and tradition that needs revival and our attention. And this is only possible with us all, the youth and the children of today. This winter, during the first snowfall, let's do something different. Let's sneak into our neighbor's home and deliver snowballs and bring back our tradition. So let's be the change ourselves. So, and this brings us to the end of today's program and we would like to thank Yishi Seang Sam for coming here and sharing with us the beautiful journey of becoming the youngest writer in Bhutan. Thank you so much Yishi and we wish you a lot of luck in your future endeavors. Thank you so much. Thank you.